Hello, this is Clint McDonald and back with another Visual Basic.net tutorial series. In today's tutorial, we're going to do an introduction to the data grid view. The data grid view is one of the most popular used controls in Windows Forms applications. And it's something that is going to take us several tutorials to cover. This tutorial is basically just an introduction to get you sort of familiar with the control and a few items like columns. So we're going to look at a little bit about what is a data grid view. We're going to look at the smart tag and how to configure columns in it. And then we'll add some data both manually and a couple rows from the code itself. But for the most part, we'll get into database binding and data sources and all that in future tutorials. So let's get into it straight away. So you can see I've got a project set up for myself already. And this is just a blank form. And you see there's no code behind it. So we're going to go ahead and do it. So the data grid view is found in the toolbox under the data container. And so we'll grab the data grid view, we'll drag it on the screen, uh, just place it here. I'm going to use the snap tools and anchoring just to set it up nicely so that it will move along with it. So the anchors, as you can see, uh, make it so that the data grid resizes with my form. Um, and then we're going to go from there. So when you first put the data grid view on the form, you can see that it is basically a big gray box. It's, it's blank. So you need to add and configure that data grid. So you have to add columns. The way the data grid view works is that you add rows, and these are your separate data identities or entities that you, that you add to the grid. But in order to add those rows to the grid, you need to define the columns. And so we'll start with that. So if you go to the smart tag here, you can see there's several options. Choose data source is the first option here. And we're not going to cover this in this tutorial, but this essentially is where you're going to do database binding. So if you're going to pull the information from a database, you're going to choose the data source. We're not going to do that in this tutorial. Then there's editing and adding columns. And we are going to do that in just a second. And then the other part of this is changing your data grid view to be read only or allowing users to make changes to the information. So you can see adding, editing, and deleting are the main changing of data. And then from a user perspective, are you able to, re, uh, to change the order of the columns? Most of the time, if you're doing a lot of programming behind a data grid view, you don't want to allow this because if they change the columns order, the indexing will change and your code may not change with it. So for now we're just gonna I'm gonna uncheck deleting just so we can't delete columns for now but we'll leave added and ending in. So let's go ahead and define our columns. So we click on edit columns we get this dialog that appears with uh, for editing columns and it's blank because we haven't got any columns yet. So we'll say add an additional add column dialog comes up and we can go ahead and start adding columns. So the name um, is the is the programmatic name for the control and yes a column is a control within the data grid so a, a data grid column is there so using Hungarian notation as my style guide um, I'm gonna put in uh, the name now the type you can see there are six different types that are built into Visual Studio with adding columns and the most popular one is a text box column so that's basically you have a string, you want to put the information in there, and it works. You can see there's button checkboxes, combo boxes, images, and links as well. So for this particular one, it would, it's just text, so we're going to put it there. And the header text is user visible. So in other words, proper English or proper language, and not Hungarian notation or anything like that. At the bottom, there's visible, read-only, and frozen. Now, most of the time, you can set the leave these alone to the defaults read only is something that's handy that if you um, have a primary key from a database or you have an identifying field that you can't change like an employee ID or something then you want to make one particular column read only and that works you can also freeze a column um, which allows it to be temporarily locked and then visible visible is something that you want obviously you want most of your columns to be visible but sometimes you need a hidden column in the back that has a unique identifier or a primary key or something that identifies it, but you don't want the users to be able to see that information. Or it's just 
not important, so we'll just hide it in the background. But you need it in the grid so you can programmatically get that identifier to manipulate the data. So we'll add that column, and I'm just going to go ahead and add four more columns quickly here. So last name, and then we're going to add a column for uh, a Boolean column, so which would refer to a checkbox column, and this is just say, hey, is this person active or not? And then we're going to go ahead and add another text box column, and this is going to be for gender. And then, obviously, since it's contacts, we should add probably a phone number. So we'll add a phone number here. So now, as I've added my five columns, you can see that they're there. And now that the un that the columns are there, the unbound column properties appear. And so I can go into here and very um, specifically change information. So something like the maximum input length. I don't want to reserve 32,000 characters for a first name, especially if this is bound to a database or something where the database fields may be only 25 characters. So set this to an appropriate length that people can't go nuts and cut and paste and stuff. This will also protect you from things like SQL Server injection attacks in the future as well. So there's not too many names that I know that are more than 25 characters. Um, the checkbox column, there's not too many things here to check. Um, however, you can see that you can do sort mode and different things like that. Now we go to gender. Oh, and you can see I actually spelt it wrong. So what's cool is now after I've made the column, I can go into the properties here and actually correct the um, spelling of something I made a mistake. Because you can see over here, there's no edit buttons. Just by highlighting them, you're editing them in the properties. So I corrected that. Gender, uh, male, female, other, so the longest is six, so we'll just leave six. And then a phone number typically is going to be 15 characters or so, so we'll leave 15 characters there. And as you can see now, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy to use. So we'll say OK here, and now you can immediately see that the columns now appear in my grid. Now we want to do a little bit more playing with this because Obviously, column widths and stuff like that are important to fit information. If information gets hidden behind because the column's not wide enough, that's just not a very good user experience. So we're going to go back in here and change a couple things. We're going to set column widths. So let's set the name to 150. That way people's names won't be hidden. The active column is just a checkbox, so it doesn't need to be very wide at all. Gender is only going to be six characters. so. Uh, maybe make it uh, there and then phone number could be a little bit longer because of extensions and stuff like that So now you can see that the layout of the columns is a little bit better There's a couple more things we want to do and This would be in the properties for the data grid itself and As you can see there's lots of properties in here um, We're only going to look at a few today and I'll show you the ones that I specifically look at every time I do a data grid so multi-select is one that I definitely uh, always look at, and that means can I select more than one column at a time. In this particular case, I don't want to, so I'll turn that to false. And the other one is selection mode. Row header select is the option where you have to click on the header itself to highlight the row, where I actually want to do full row select here. And this will change depending on if you're editing or not, because if you have full row select on, you can't edit an individual column. Well, you can, but you have to use tabs and keyboard shortcuts and stuff, and it's a little bit more, uh, a little less user friendly. So, depending on what you want to do. The other thing I want to do is, uh, I got to find it here. So, is this allow user to stuff? And so, in here, allow users to resize rows. I'm going to turn that to false because when you have that turned on the cursor changes when you're on the line between the, the rows and it's sometimes hard to click on them because the cursor is the other way and you actually end up making the column the rows um, different sizes and it's not, again for user inner um, user experience. I'm going to leave the resize columns on because if we do have to get some really big data that gets hidden that allows the user to resize them and see data that may or may not be hidden. Allow them to re to change the order of the columns. I usually leave that off, and you can see delete rows is off, and I chose that in my smart tag. So there you go. So there's the basics of setting up a data grid. 
there's all kinds of stuff where you can put style guides and put colors in the backgrounds and all kinds of stuff and you'll just have to go through these and experience them sometimes you want your numbers to be right justified if it's a if it's a, a price or a cost you want it to be right justified so you want to leave it in there so let's go ahead and run this really quickly and see how it works okay there we go we've got our data grid up we can start typing in um, some names we can set the active set the gender put in a phone number um, and etc and so you can see very quickly and then I can go ahead and, and add another row here so it's it's pretty straightforward as far as getting things set up and and going from there and as you can see I can't I'm hitting the delete key uh, I can't delete that information because it's it's locked in there because I turned deletes off um, so that's the basics I'm gonna show one more thing and we're not gonna go through this in detail because we covered in the next tutorial anyways but if we add a button to this and I'm just going to pre-populate this information. So uh, pre-populate the grid with uh, some information I've typed in in advance. And so what I've got is if I go in here, I'm going to have my clicky map. I've actually got a some code already written in here, um, which will add data automatically for me, and then we can see how the data looks when there's more data in in the uh, in the grid so I'm just gonna paste this information in here quickly and if you're interested I'll leave this up for a second you can pause the video and see how this works but basically we're adding data grid rows and then we're adding text box cells and checkbox cells just like we did in the add column dialog and then we set their values based on information that we pull and then once we set the value for each individual cell we have to add it to um, uh, the row all right so you can see at the end we add each particular uh, information to the row so this is row cells add and then we add the row to the data grid and that's basically how it works so if I go ahead and run this if I say pre-populate you can see you can fill in a lot of information and it gives you sort of an idea of how we're going to start getting more and more information into these grids but it also allows you to see that you can automatically built into the control are things like sorting so you can sort based on the columns and right now you can see the active field the sorting ability is turned off so I cannot sort it by that so you have all the flexibility that you need in order to manipulate data and move it around um, etc and that makes it a very flexible and usable tool and that's why it's one of the most popular ones in Windows Forms applications. Thank you.